Good morning. Uh, here are the announcements today. Um, we want, to, want you to welcome our new church administrator, uh, Nancy Zacharias. Uh, Zacharias, thank you. She, she's not in the audience today. She, I don't expect her to be. Uh, but she's going to be in the office from uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That is, the office will be open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. And the library will open for the same hours. So keep that in mind. Uh, there's a screening uh, for animal advocates. It's going to be on Thursday, April 18th from uh, 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. at the Brannigan Memorial Library. This free screening is sponsored by Food and Water Watch, an environmental research and advocacy group focusing on climate pollution and food systems. And Dave Steele has more information. Dave, why don't you stand up and wave? There we go. If you need to talk to someone, talk to him. Uh, there is also a new uh, Unitarian Universalist uh, church program for vegetarians and vegans. So if you've decided to not eat meat, uh, well, there you are. Okay. Uh, we do have more openings in the Visioning Casita meetings. These are meetings that we're having to uh, find out the direction that the congregation wants to go in. And uh, I'm going to do mine tomorrow afternoon, I think, at 1 o'clock. Anyway. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, Susan Hitchko will be out in the, uh, in the foyer after the church if you want to sign up for this if you haven't done that already. Uh, let me remind you about the auction which is coming up on April 20th and uh, this is uh, Sunshine on Our Shoulders and I would sing you the mock song that I wrote about this but I won't bother today. Uh, well it goes like this, Sunshine on My Shoulders gives me sunburn, Sunshine on My Back gives me a rash, Sunshine on my face makes me look older. Sunshine makes me look like Johnny Cash. Okay, but that's my song. That's not the song for the... Anyway, the auction starts at 3 o'clock. Uh, there are two things I want to remind you of. You can buy lottery tickets, I think, from the man with the hat, and I don't see him here. Is he here? He, he's out in the foyer. Good. Okay, you can buy tickets from him and put them in the, for these uh, um, outings. And there are three places. There's uh, one in uh, Ruidoso, there's River Bend in uh, Tier C, and there's also one in Kingston. And so each of them are, are worth doing. And I think the tickets are a buck. Is that right? Something like that. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Explain. Pardon me. The tickets are ten dollars. Oh, well, that, that's more than a buck. Okay. Yeah, I think the raffle tickets are a buck. And uh, the, some of the baskets are on display there. Those baskets will be at the auction as well. And finally, about the auction, uh, if you want to get a preview, uh, that is a, uh, a heads-ups or a get ahead of the sign-ups, you can do that in the library after the service today. Okay. And the children's auction will be held on the 21st. That's a week from today, right after the service. Uh, the roundtable is meeting today. Uh, their speaker is Kevin Bixby co-executive director of Wildlife for All, uh, which sounds like a party animal sort of thing, but uh, <laughs> I, th I think it's more serious than that. Anyway, I know Kevin, he's a good man, and he'll be speaking to the round table, and that starts at 1145, and they're gonna be meeting in the library. And uh, finally, Peace Village returns to UUCLC this summer, and the people who are running that are Svea Peterson and Sandy Barmecue, and they're, uh, Emails are on the order of your service, okay? And now for something completely different. Mike? The greatest thing about the auction is the fun you can have. Just think, for five bucks you can eat and drink and bid on fabulous events, valuable objects, great services, and beautiful baskets. And then there are the getaways. Buy your lottery tickets and win a wonderful stay at a great location. And yes, there are booths to keep you informed. And yes, there are three bands to keep the music flowing. There will be sunshine on your shoulders and fun, fun, fun at our UU auction, April 20th. Love that band. Have you done your research for the auction on April 20th? Have you read the catalog? Do you know what you're going to bid on? Do you know which getaway is the one for you? Are you prepared to outbid all those others for the events that you crave? 
Well, then all you have to do is show up, get registered, and start bidding. And don't forget to eat and drink and have fun, fun, fun at our UU auction, April 20th. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Catherine? Good morning. Welcome. It's so good to see you all this morning. I'm Catherine Massey, Director of Music, and I'm excited that we, just as we do each Sunday, begin with a song. Uh, the wonderful prayer by St. Francis of Assisi that reminds us how connected we are to all creatures of the earth and sky, number 203. And I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we sing together. Good morning again, and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Las Cruces. We welcome all of those who are in the sanctuary uh, and those who are joining us via streaming technology. I'm Charlie Scholes, your service assistant associate today, 
Our service leader is our minister, Rod Thompson. Our director of music, whom you've already seen, is Catherine Massey, and she's joined by the wonderful UUCLC Choir. <laughs> our director of religious education, who will join us in a few minutes, is uh, Kelly Ingram. Assisting us on technology today are Elwin Nunn on camera, Claire Wallace on audio, and Mike Yesko on streaming technology. The chalice table was prepared by Diane Lee and Jillian Lang, and our greeters today, whom you've already met, are Steve Hitchcock, Peggy Devlin, and Lisa Stevens. And hospitality today is offered by the Committee on Ministry and the Right Relations team. We're all delighted to have you here today. If you're visiting us, we'd like, you to, we'd like to meet you. Uh, if you're in the sanctuary, please rise in body or spirit and introduce yourself by telling us your name and where you are from. But wait until I bring you the microphone. Visitors today? Oh, on here? Here we go. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Sort of. <laughs> well, I'm Paul O'Connell. I've been a member here for quite a... <laughs> and it's been lovely to see you folks. Thank you for joining us, Paul. All right, another visitor. Someone, none in the choir? Oh, there, there's someone there, okay. I didn't think there were any visitors in the choir today. That would be, that would, that would be different, wouldn't it? Thank you, Charlie. Hi, everyone. My name is Renee DiBiasso, and this is my beautiful daughter, uh, Alexandra Grace. Great to be here. Nice to see you, thank you. Anyone else? All righty. Uh, any visitors today on streaming technology? Not I. Okay, gotcha. Unitarian Universalism has no creed or dogma. We're a covenant-based church, meaning that we agree to, relief, to live in relationship with each other according to the Unitarian Universalist principles and our congregation's covenant of right relations. We embrace diversity in all its forms. Everyone is welcome. And you can learn more about our church at our website, uuchurchlc.org. And join us after the service for coffee and conversation uh, inside or outside the RE building down the breezeway, uh, brought to you today by the Committee on Ministry and the Right Relations team. We light our chalice this morning with these words from Adam Slate. We gather this morning as one community, a community united by common ideals, love, justice, diversity, freedom, mutual care, equity. Yet look around, uh, look at the faces of those around you. Each face represents an individual. Every one of us with our own story, needs, strengths, and faults. So we light our chalice today honoring our common connection and also the uniqueness that lives within each of us. We are one, we are family, we are connected by blood and bone, mind and heart, and sometimes bricks and mortar. Like the finest woven tapestries of old and the spices blended and stirred into our family's secret recipes, our lives are intentionally intertwined. And we are made, no, we are fashioned into a stronger community by those connections. This interlacing, intertwining, and intermingling of our existence makes each of us whole. This interlacing 
of our lives makes us whole, happiness and sorrow. This intertwining of our lives makes us whole, blessings and burdens. This interlacing of our lives makes us whole, lament and laughter. May we allow the magic and mystery often named spirit to keep us connected long after today's service has ended. Come, let us worship together this morning. I invite you now to stand as you are willing and able to join in the saying of our covenant and then the singing of the doxology in English and in Spanish. Love, Love is, is the doctrine, doctrine of this church. Request of truth is our sacrament, and his service is our prayer. We dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve others in community, to demand that all souls shall go into harmony with the creation. Thus do we covenant. church. A <laughs> uh, quick little announcement for any newly attending youth. If you would like to join us in the RE building after Time for All Ages, you're welcome to walk out with us. Okay. Not now. No, not now. <laughs> Today's story is titled, And the Green Grass Grew All Around. There was a hole in the middle of the ground the prettiest hole that you ever did see. And the green grass grew all around, all around, and the green grass grew all around. And in this hole, there was a tree, the prettiest tree that you ever did see. And the tree in the hole, in the hole in the ground, and the green grass grew all around, all around. And on this tree, there was a branch, the prettiest branch that you ever did see. And the branch on the tree and the tree and the hole and the hole and the ground and the green grass grew all around, all around, and the green grass grew all around. And on this branch, there was a nest, the prettiest nest that you ever did see. <clears throat> And the nest on the branch, and the branch on the tree, and the tree in the hole, and the hole in the ground, and the green grass grew all around, all around, and the green grass grew all around. And in this nest, there was an egg, the prettiest egg that you ever did see. And the egg in the nest, and the nest on the branch, and the branch on the tree, and the tree in the hole, and the hole in the ground, and the green grass grew all around, all around, and the green grass grew all around. And in this egg, there was a bird, the prettiest bird that you ever did see. Okay. Are we ready? Here we go. 
And the bird and the egg and the egg in the nest and the nest on the branch and the branch on the tree and the tree and the hole and the hole in the ground. And the green grass grew all around, all around, and the green grass grew all around. opening hymn is number 298, Wake Now My Senses, and the words will be on the screen. Would you rise in body or spirit? One of the ways we support each other in community is through the sharing of joys and sorrows and milestones. And in these challenging times, it's crucial that we make attempts to stay connected with each other. If you have a joy, a sorrow, or a milestone that you'd like to share with the congregation this morning, please raise your hand and I will bring the mic to you. State your name and tell us what's in your heart. Uh, good morning, my name is Jack Welch and I have a joy to share. 
Uh, my wife, Gail Trantham, is recovering from major surgery. And in recent days, she no longer needs a walker to get around the house. She can maneuver <laughs> on her own. And no ton intended, no ton intended, but this is a big step forward. Oh yeah, very good, yeah. Yes. Good morning, I'm Bev Nelson, and I just want to tell you that this week I went to one of the casitas and it was wonderful. I met six new people that I did not know before, and it was such a joy to be with others from our congregation. So please, I encourage you to go to a casitas and meet as many people as you can. Enjoy. Thank you. I see some hands in front. Some of you uh, might recall um, my brother, um, John, was diagnosed with cancer, pancreatic cancer, four and a half years ago. He's uh, had a number of treatments and uh, many steps forward, a little bit backward, but I just wanted to let you know he's among the remarkable number of people who is still around and his... Um, checkup this last month showed no sign of cancer whatsoever. Okay, I, I, yes, I see the hand there. My name is Jan Thompson, and I have a great joy this weekend. My brother and sister-in-law have come down to uh, go bicycling, which I don't do with them, but uh, <laughs> family is very important. Thank you. I'm Lucy Silva, and I just returned from a trip to Arizona where I got to see my daughter and uh, three grandchildren and uh, some long, long time friends. So I'm appreciative of that. Thank you. All right, I have a joy. Uh, yesterday, uh, nine people turned out to put new bumpers in the parking lot, the north parking lot here. And if you park on the south side, you might uh, take a peek and see how beautiful the parking lot looks now with these new concrete bumpers. And uh, we, we did the entire job all, almost without accident, except I ran into the forklift. And uh, you know, that's, uh, so I, I have the scars to prove it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, but the other thing we did was relocate the table, which had been lying down in the slope there by the south parking lot, and we picked it up with the forklift and brought it into place, and I understand glued it down. Is that right, Dave? We, we glued it down? Gravity's helping. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so that, that's my joy. Uh, since I'm the facilities manager, I always have to keep the place together, you know, as they say. I have a couple of readings to share this morning. The first is from my colleague, uh, Terry Sweetser. It's entitled, Imagine a Spider's Web. If you are comfortable doing so, I would invite you to close your eyes and use the theater of the mind. Imagine a spider's web spun in a great sheet. Its gossamer silk shines in the sparkling sunlight. Though fashioned of many strands, it moves as one pulsating skein with the rustle of a breeze. On its fringes, 
the web is almost invisibly tied to the world surrounding it. At first, it seems an isolated, suspended apparition, but stepping back, we see it sways with the nearby branches attached, yet with free form, in constant embrace with all of nature. Consider now the web's architect. No, not the dutiful spider, which from birth must instinctively spin with every movement. Consider yourself, the spinner of dreams, love and just now, this imaginary image of a spider's web. We choose the webs we weave. In these last moments, some chose the image I described, others did not, and still others lost interest along the way. Whatever your choice, it was an amazing example. <clears throat> it was an amazing example of the complicated creativity which is the interdependent web of existence. My second reading comes from one of my favorite poets, Denise Levertov. It's entitled The Web. Intricate and untraceable, weaving and interweaving, dark strand with light, designed beyond all spidery contrivance to link, not to entrap. Elation, grief, joy, contrition intertwined, shaking, changing, forever forming, transforming, all praise to the great web. There is hurting in my family. There is sorrow in my town. There is panic in the nation. There is wailing the whole world. Go before us, so lift me 
a preface. Like the spider's web sparkling in the sunlight, we are caught in a web of all existence rustling in a breeze. So at times during this homily, I may pause for us to reflect on those thoughts and know it's not because I've lost my place. <laughs> the interdependent web. Interdependence has been named by the Soul Matters folks as the theme for April, which just happens to bring to my mind anyway the seventh of our Unitarian Universalist Association principles. Respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. In my mind, I think this principle is different from the previous six, as well as the eighth, which follows it, obviously, and has been recently added. As you may remember, this principle appears different than the others, the previous ones anyway. The others are rational and logical and linear and deal with behaviors. The seventh one looks for the emotional, the spiritual, the relational. The seventh deals with being rather than behaving. The first six seem to come from the traditionally male characteristics of rational, logical, and linear. Don't beat me up on these uh, characteristics, okay? <laughs> the seventh seems to be from the traditional female characteristics, feelings, experiences, and relationships. The first six seem to mostly come from our Unitarian side. The seventh seems to be more directly from the Universalist side, with a nod toward the transcendentalists of both. The first six seem to be to want to be talked about, to be preached about, to be discussed. The seventh, I feel, is we want to read poetry. Just happened that I have one. <laughs> it's called Survivors <laughs> of Distant Stars by Deanne Weir. Remember that once we were creatures of sea. We rushed to rescue water. Knowing that we are now creatures of the land, we rush to rescue earth. Flying to the future on wings of hope and on dream songs of children, we rush to rescue sky. Belonging each to each other, Together we ride the wind as seeds seeking a garden. The interdependent web. We who lead services look to the resources provided by Soul Matters. And since Earth Day happens to happen in April, most of the materials that were in that uh, resource were focused on the interdependence we have with the earth and with the universe, and most of our music today focuses there. I uh, suspect that you all individually have had at one time or another the realization of your interdependence with the universe. Mine happened at the mountain. The mountain is our camp, conference, and retreat center 
in western North Carolina and is literally on top of Little Scaly Mountain. Outside the lodge of that, uh, of the mountain, there is a wonderful porch with some very nice wide benches that go around the porch. One evening when the lights were not on in the lodge or out on the porch, I laid down on one of those benches. It was a beautiful starry night. And all of a sudden I realized I'm made of the same thing as those stars. Now I'm not knocking the earth focus at all. We need to focus a lot of our attention on and energy on our interdependence with the universe. But this morning, I want to focus more on our interdependence with each other. As Reverend Cecil says, we are one, we are family, we are connected by bone and blood, by mind and heart. Bishop Desmond Tutu uses the phrase, I am because we are. He also introduced me, anyway, to the phrase or the word Ubuntu, the essence of being human. Ubuntu speaks particularly about the fact that you can't exist as a human being in isolation. It speaks about our interconnectedness. You can't be human all by yourself. We think of ourselves far too frequently as just individuals separated from one another, whereas you are connected and what you do affects the whole world. When you do well, it spreads out. It is the whole of humanity. Even science understands this interdependence of people. In an article published in The Greater Good, the author begins with a quotation from Albert Einstein. Without the sense of fellowship with men of like mind, life would have seemed to be empty. The author goes on to say, it is perhaps unsurprising that that iconic physicist intuited something fundamental about the inner workings of the human mind and soul long before science itself had attempted to concretize in the imperial evidence, with imperial evidence. Now it has, according to this article, in social, why brains are wired to connect by the neuroscientist Matthew Lieberman. He sets out to get a clear, to get clear about who we are as social creatures and to reveal how a more accurate understanding of our social nature can improve our lives and our society. Lieberman, who has spent the last couple of decades using scientific tools to study how the human brain responds to social context is found over and over again that our brains are not emphasized, not, merely simplistic mechanisms that only respond to pain and pleasure, but are instead wired to connect. At the heart of his inquiry is the simple question, 
Why do we feel such intense agony when we lose a loved one? He argues that far from being a design flaw in our new neural architecture, our capacity for such overwhelming grief is a vital feature of our evolutionary construction. As interesting as that is, let's bring it a little closer to home. Everything we do affects others. Brigitte Bechhold put it in a less scientific term. By the time you finish your morning breakfast, you have become interdependent with half of the people of the world. You may have had coffee from Peru, with sugar from Brazil, an orange from California, tea from England or Sri Lanka, a mobile device with coltan from the Republic of the Congo, a waffle baked by someone in the Netherlands, a rose from Hawaii, and so on. She writes, Martin Luther King Jr. concluded, that's the way the universe is structured. Really, reality is interrelated, interdependent. And being the social reformer that he was, Martin Luther King concluded, we aren't going to have peace on earth until we can recognize the basic fact that of the interdependent structure of reality. Yes, I agree. But I also realize that there are times in our lives when we are hit in the face with that reality of interdependence by the wrong end of something that we would like to give back. Something we said or did that affected someone negatively or hurtfully. Something that we wish we hadn't said or done. I remember one incident many years ago in my days of overbearing humanism when I didn't want to do, see anything that was Christian. I was introduced to the wife of one of the members of our congregation uh, who identified herself as a Lutheran. And I, in my <coughs> worst days, laughed and said, I'm sorry. She did not take it very humorously. <laughs> she was very offended. And I don't blame her. As soon as I said it and saw the look on her face, I tried to apologize, but the damage had been done. That mistake only affected a couple of people, but it also affected that church. And it took a long time to recover. In our Western society, the individual is regarded as the model that we are all supposed to emulate. Almost every television ad urges us to look our best or to stay as young looking as we can, that we should exercise, lose weight, eat this or eat that and take that pill because it will make us more attractive. Over the years, especially when I was working in radio, I bought into that philosophy. I was already an introvert, so one way I dreamed of being the best I could be was to be a hermit, to be self-sufficient, off the grid. 
to build a cabin in the woods as far away from people as possible. <coughs> Since I could never afford to do that, I eventually realized that I needed my family. I needed a community. And actually, my washtub base helped me to realize that because a washtub bass is not a solo instrument. <laughs> it has to play with others. And I even have a t-shirt that says I play well with others. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to affect your <laughs> Anyway. Where was I? <laughs> Um, so here I am on purpose <coughs> in a community, in a covenanted church community with you. What we do affects others and others affect us. A lot of the books and movies I have been reading and watching lately have been carrying that message that we affect each other. I even give the Hallmark Channel some credit for that. <laughs> That's one of my guilty pleasures. <laughs> but the, actually, as I thought about this, it was another focus of the books and, and movies that I like. Time travel. which, of course, Jules Verne kind of got it all started with his time machine. And we all know there's only one rule of time travel. You don't change anything while you're there. Well, the reality of time travel, did I really say that? The reality of time travel is that if you change one thing, it will affect everything thereafter. Of course, Vern did violate that rule in his story because the character pulls his time machine outside the door so that he can change history. Fortunately for the rest of us, we can't change the past. Like the spider's web, invisibly tied to the world around it, we are tied to that world and to each other, whether we always remember it or not. I'm going to let another author from Soul Matters, Francis Weller, have the last word. She wrote, Psychotherapist Mir Miriam Greenspan uses the term intervulnerability to describe the need for mutually held space. When asked about this idea in an interview, she replied, when I say we are intervulnerable, I mean we suffer together, whether consciously or unconsciously. And she quotes Albert Einstein, who called it an, to the idea of a separate self as optical delusion of consciousness. And Martin Luther King referred to it as our inescapable web of mutuality. She continues, there is no way out. Though we try to escape by armoring ourselves against pain and in the process diminishing our lives and our consciousness. But in our inner vulnerability is our salvation. Because awareness of the mutuality of suffering impels us to search for ways to heal the whole rather than 
encase ourselves in a bubble of denial or impossible individualism. At this point in history, it seems that we will never destroy ourselves. We will either destroy ourselves or find a way to build a sustainable life together. I hope this has given us something to think about. So be it. Blessed be and amen. I think, yeah, I think it's your turn. The operation and outreach of our church needs your input and your contributions. This is the perfect time to think about what you can give back. And in a moment, the greeters will pass among you and with the offering baskets, please give generously. But before they do that, I should remind you that we support organizations identified by our social justice committee with what we call our Change for Change program. This quarter's recipient for our Change for Change donations is the Mesilla Valley Casa. You can give it to them by putting your change in the basket or by writing change for change on the note line of your check. Please give generously. My closing words come from one of the influencers of my ministry, the Reverend Peter Rabel. 
We build on foundations we did not lay. We warm ourselves by fires we did not light. We sit in the shade of trees we did not plant. We drink from wells we did not dig. We profit from persons we did not know. This is as it should be. Together, we are more than any one person could be. Together, we build across the generations. Together, we can renew our hope and faith in the life that is yet to unfold. Together, we can heed the call to a ministry of care and justice. We, can ev we are ever bound in community. May it always be so. And one of the hymns in our repertoire certainly carries that theme completely. It's 1064 if you're using the teal hymnal. Well, it's there whether you use it or not. <laughs> the words will be up there. The Blue Boat Home, 1064. If you'll stand as you're willing and able. We will sing together. be seated. But please join me in saying the words to extinguish the flame. The words are on the screen. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we hold in our hearts until we are together. <laughs> 